it's the final day of Champions League action. I'm Chris Cross and welcome to Around the Grounds. Welcome to this special edition of Around the Grounds. Before we crack into tonight's main game between Monaco and Zenit, we are going to wrap up the groups that finished last night. Out of Group A, Juventus top, Chelsea in spot two, Dortmund go the Europa League, and Dynamo Kiev are on zero points. A giggity giggity. Oh! Group B, it is the money group. Manchester City and Paris Saint-Germain going through just ahead of Valencia on 10 points. They'll be in the Europa League. And Olympiakos, just like a Greek government bank account, has got a big zero in it. On to Group C, Hertha Berlin. Out of Germany, top Lazio with Pep Guardiola. Qualify second, Benfica third. And Rijeka out of Croatia with zero points, just like the amount of World Cups they've got. And finally from last night, Group D, Sporting and Celtic tied on points. But goal difference means that Sporting qualify top, Club Bruges in third. And Ajax, the shock of the round so far. Missing out completely on European football knockouts. On to tonight's action in Group E. Southampton have already qualified. Bayern Munich, Roma and Real Madrid all have a slight chance of going through. Some big games here. Bayern versus Real Madrid and Roma versus Southampton. The second qualifying spot still all up for grabs. On to Group F. This one, it's done. It's dusted. Leipzig and Porto going through. They face off tonight to see who qualifies top. Group G we're on to now, a wonderful effort from Monaco and Sean Damon. What a manager. His team is already through. Manchester United and Atletico Madrid play. Whoever wins that goes through. A draw sees Manchester United go through. Zenit are just there to spoil Monaco's party and taking out top spot. And on to Group H. The big shock of the group stage so far. AZ have already qualified. Barcelona and Liverpool fighting out for that second qualifying spot. Barcelona taking on AZ, Liverpool taking on Baitar Jerusalem. It will be interesting to see who goes through, but we're about ready to go to St. Petersburg for Zenit versus Monaco, and it's live. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Hexagon Challenge here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well. Today, as mentioned in the intro, not sure where Chris Cross came from, but yeah. Um, we're playing Zenit in our last Champions League game. We are already guaranteed to be going through. If we win this though, we will be going through top of our group, which would be nice in a tough group that included Manchester United and Atletico Madrid who play each other in the other game. And as you saw in that intro, some interesting other games going on now as well. And you also would have seen who have already gone through in yesterday's action and game. If you're looking forward to this, then please do leave a thumbs up down below. And if you enjoyed the content here, also remember to hit that subscribe button if you have not done so already. And turn the notification bell on. So before we get into this game, we've had some League R games since we last played. Very mixed results in three of them. We'll show you guys the highlights now. First up, a very good win against Lille, beating them 5-0 at home. We started off in the 17th minute. I mean, Gaudi on the ball had a really good game here. Plays Flavio Enrique somewhat through. He dribbles around the defence. Nice, powerful shot. Gets through Denali's hands, it looked like there. And we had a 1-0 lead at the 17-minute mark. Not long after that, it was I mean, Gaudi. This ball by Aljef Almas. Wonderful ball. Caught everyone out. And I mean, Gaudi with a simple back post header. To make it to now then after half time we got a penalty i mean garley slotted it away into the right hand corner to make it 3-0 not long after that in the 55th minute it was ricky puig from edge of the box as he does he's done it a few times this season last one into the left hand side of the goal 4-0 we were cruising and then in the 89th minute ricky puig putting a long ball over the top foot flavio Enrique, then he gets his hat trick or sorry his double i should say putting that in the bottom left corner Really good performance for a 5-0 win. And stats-wise, Lille probably consider themselves unlucky not to get a goal there, but definitely the better team there and a thoroughly 
dominant win, which is nice to be able to say. Off the back of that, though, we took on Lens away and a one all draw. Salah started things off well for Lens in the 16th minute. Sinistera down this right-hand side was able to put a ball in. Near post header got far too free, far too easy, and buried that, and we were 1-0 down. Then in the 31st minute, we grabbed our equaliser, Kamara Gerardo, with a sort of back poke sort of punched it. Agume found a mean Gali and the goalkeeper hadn't quite recovered from that punch it looked like and was able to somewhat catch him out with a shot, found the back of the net, but that's how it stayed. One all disappointing result. Stat-wise, really should have done better. Yeah, disappointing result that, but frustrating. And then we took on Strasbourg prior to the Zenit game and we were only able to beat them 1-0, but we'll take the win. A game where there were lots of shots, but not much doing until the 82nd minute. The flying Kiwi Marco Stamanek Baby Enrique heads one backwards and down for him. Blast into that bottom left corner. That was the only goal. That was the difference maker, giving us a valuable three points. You look at the stats, we definitely deserved a win here, but it was a lot closer than it should have been. So last few games, the clinicalness and whatnot, not great, but we're still on the hunt league R wise. And part of that is because Marseille have finally lost a game on the past match week. If we flick through the results, you will see they lost the early kickoff on that day 4 0 to Leon. So they are keeping pace with both us and PSG, but they've still got a six point gap to Marseille. PSG, that result was nil all until about the 89th minute, and then they just threw three goals in late to PSG. So dodgy, dodgy against Nice, but they keep pace with us. They're now level on points with us. That lens draw, really costly. Well, not a team you want to be dropping points against, but. Really good fight in these top four spots in League Oh, at the moment, so we're going to need to be on our game after we wrap up this Champions League group and hopefully qualify top. So a few games to keep an eye on today as we run through in that intro. But we'll get into the game, we'll run through our team, show you guys the team sheets and get into the match coverage shortly in the snow in St. Petersburg, taking on Zenit to wrap up the Champions League group stage. So here are the team sheets that Zenit team Looking pretty similar to the one that we took on in the second match week. The one that really did pinch a draw off us. They are at home managerless in this game with the Russian League obviously not loaded. We have a few changes. It's mostly our first team. The only real difference actually to be fair is just that Quintero comes in for Flavio Enrique. Who has had a bit of a heavy workload according to the tactics screen. So we'll give him a rest. Make sure he doesn't get injured prior to some important League on games. Hopefully we can take advantage of perhaps a slipping up Marseille. We'll give Quintero a shot in the Champions League. He's a quality replacement. He should do the job that Enrique can do. Otherwise, pretty much full strength, which is nice to be saying. So hopefully we can get the points here against Zenit and qualify top. And here is that Zenit formation. It's a 4-4-2, pretty sort of standard stuff. And hopefully we can make up for that draw against them in the first round of games. And there's our formation, the 4-3-3. As I said, the team you'd expect just with Quintero up top instead of Flavio Enrique. And you can see a point's not enough. We need a win here. If Manchester United were able to beat Madrid and we drew, then they would qualify top. So ideally we win this game. And against Zena, it's a perfect chance for us to do so. We are in the home red and white uniform playing right to left. Zena also in their home uniform. The light blue, they are playing in the opposite direction. We kick off this half. Really slide tackle there, but no penalty. That is nil all early, but we do get to see the highlight from the throw in. And it's Gabriel Fernandez on the ball back to Mert Mulder who put the ball in. Over to Ethan Ampadu. Back from a little bit of a rest. In for Quintero. Agume. Alvaro Fernandez forces a save out of Horvath. Early shot. Not the most threatening it didn't look like, but it's a chance. And now Nianzu with a good hitting chance from a corner just over the bar, though. Started off well, but it's still nil all. Throw in to Monaco, 10th minute. In terms of other games, two early goals to Liverpool in the Group H games. That's something to keep an eye on. Barcelona are in a bit of trouble there because Liverpool do have the head-to-head -head tiebreaker in their favour. So consider that. It might be Barcelona out at the moment. Quintero beats the goalkeeper there, though. We can focus on our game now. Horvath not getting to that ball. And Quintero gets a goal, and we're 1-0 up. And as things Stand, we would be qualifying top of the group. Good work there from Alvaro Fernandez to get the ball before Chong. Back into Almas, spotted the run from Quintero. And Horvath 
should have gone to ground there, just sort of went to bend over and pick it up. And by the time he did that, Quintero had pinched the ball off him. 1-0 after 12 minutes. And we have another highlight from a throw-in, although Fernandez loses the ball to Chong. They play it deep, but taps over heads that away. We do have Nianzu on a yellow card, so we will have to keep that in mind. Now, Quintero on the ball. It's a shot. It's blocked. Kicked clear. And Bob Blavosky gets the ball, albeit taps over, takes it into touch. Still 1-0 as we approach quarter of an hour. Another throw-in, so we can't catch you guys up on those other results. It is now Almas on the ball. Good position for us. Gabriel Fernandez forces a save out of Horvath, and we will have another corner. And Dembele whips it in, tries to find taps over on Nianzu, can't. Almas will recover position, I was going to say for us, but he can't. Bob Rulovsky gets it, and it is still 1-0 as we come up to the 20-minute mark. And Barcelona in real trouble, albeit they've just got a goal back against AZ. Throw in to Monaco, 34th minute. Not a lot of action, to be fair, since that early stages in that first goal. Now Dembele making his way in field with the ball. Out to Alvaro Fernandez in a bit of space on the left-hand side. Hopefully we can get that cushion goal that we didn't get in the first tie between these two teams and make it 2-0 before halftime. Ampadu to Almas. Quintero Dembele is a shot. It's blocked. They knock it back to Zenit. But Horvath clears it only as far as Mert Mulder. Now Ampadu, we look to build again. Agume out to Mulder. Back to Almas. He'll put a ball over from Quintero. And again, he's beaten Horvath, although he might be offside. Tell you what, Horvath not having a great game in goal. You have to say, even if this does get ruled out, because that's nearly a mirror image to the first goal, and he was offside, so it won't count. But a, pretty much a mirror image, except on the other side of goal for Quintero. And he is a straight offside, so a good decision there from VAR. Not often you can say that. Still 1-0 as we get into the last 10 minutes of this first half. And we've got to half time. Pretty quiet half. Two good chances for us, albeit one of them was offside, so it didn't count. But a good early goal for Edwin Quintero, thanks to an Almas assist. And we are 1-0 up and looking fairly comfortable at the moment, albeit I would like that second goal. So we don't have the same issue that happened in the first meeting between these two teams. As we get to the dressing room, Tell the boys they're capable of better. I was going to show you guys what was happening in the other games. We'll make one change because Nianzu is on a yellow and there's no point leaving him out there with that. We'll bring Sevalano on for him. Just that change is most players playing pretty well, it's fair to say. So we'll get into the second half. I will pause shortly to show you guys what's happening in the other games. Not a lot of change since that sort of mid-first half update at the moment. Liverpool going through out of Group H ahead of Barcelona, which... Yeah, there's going to be an upset there. All right, we'll pause this now so we can run you guys through what's happening. And Atletico Madrid are beating Manchester United. I'm not actually sure who scored the goal, but that's interesting. Manchester United potentially back to the Europa League. We're the oh-so-familiar in real life. We run through these groups. You can see there's our one up top. Bayern Munich are beating Real Madrid, so that helps them. Porto currently going to go through top of Group F, and there's that Group H. Thanks to the head-to-head -head Liverpool on top of Barcelona at the moment. But if they do get a draw, then Barcelona will be going back into second position. So some interesting stuff happening. Definitely for mine, that Group H, probably the most interesting thing. But with Atletico Madrid being Manchester United, that's also a bit tasty in our group as well. But we'll keep you guys somewhat up to date where we can. And we'll get into the second half where hopefully we can keep our lead so we qualify top of Group G. Throw into Monaco, 53rd, although we give the ball straight to Zenit. There's some poor stuff from us. And now uh, Zenit play out from the back. Golovin puts the ball over from Pazala up to Shalov. Back out to Pazala in a little bit of space on that right-hand side. Anguissa over to Golovin. Here's a long shot. Goron forced into a save and can't hold it, so it will be a corner to Zenit. And they look to grab another equaliser. It was Dembele with that goal for Madrid. It's only just come through now. Golovin with the header. Chong. Sorry, Golovin with the corner. Chong with the header. Straight at Goron, though. And he rolls that across goal. Interesting. But it remains 1-0 for now. Albeit now we have a throw-in. And we keep possession this time. Ampadu over to Almas. A lot of space he was in for a moment. Tries to get around Yusev. Can't. Back to Ampadu. Agume. Ampadu again, ball over to Mulder on the left-hand side, back to Agume, knocking it around in the final third we are, which is good to see. Almas, back to Ampadu, look to build something here, Dembele, Agume, Almas, plays the ball through Dembele with a long shot just over the bar, still 1-0 as we approach the hour mark. 
And we will get shown this goal kick. Horvath boots it long. Trying to find Shalov. Khan. It's Fernandez heading that to a Gourmet. Long ball. Trying to find Quintero. And Tov with a good slide tackle to keep possession for Zenit. And now the defenders knock it about. They try and play a ball forward, but we do get possession back as they tried to flick it on, I believe. And now it's Dembele on the ball, making his way infield from that right-hand side. Puts the ball over the top. Now Pazella heads that back to Horvath. And he boots it deep, trying to create something, although taps over, heads that down to Agume. Fernandez into Quintero. Almas, long highlight. Something might be coming. Dembele out to Mulder. Plays one for Dembele. Crosses it. And it's an own goal. Antov with a slide tackle. Horvath, pretty much a statue there. Not showing a lot in goal today, it's fair to say. And we get our goal cushion that we're after. And hopefully we beat them this time and we can qualify top of the group. Only 32 minutes left to play plus injury time. Nice ball from Mulder. You could see what Dembele was trying to do. Looked like he was trying to play Quintero in there, but Antov could see the danger. It went for the slide tackle, but unfortunately for them, puts it in the back of his own net and we are 2-0 up. And we have a free kick shortly after that as well as we look to make it free. Malmass up to Dembele. Good chance. Had to get around a teammate though. And Horvath this time actually makes a save. Still 2-0. And we have yet another highlight in short succession as we get the ball to Severlano off the bench. Mulder. Almas, Mulder. Almas again. Tries to find Fernandez. It will get headed out to the other Fernandez at left back. And he'll find Gabriel. Looks, uh, Pizzala turns the ball over there, although a bit messy stuff. And Gabriel Fernandez keeps the ball, although his shot finds a side netting. And it's still 2-0. Throw-in very shortly after that. The second half absolutely full of action, albeit only one goal so far. Um, hopefully it stays that way if it's Zena on the ball, because we do not want them coming back into this. Shalov, Chong, tackle. We get the ball back. Agume on the counter. He makes his way forward. There's a player on the right there in a bit of space. Dembele might find him. No, he's going to go himself. Here's a shot, but it's blocked. We will have a corner, though. Dembele, Dembele on a yellow heart, as is Mulder, so that's something to consider. Taps over with the header over the bar, and it's still 2-0 just after the hour mark. Throw in to Zenit. 70 minutes gone. No change in the other games, really. There's nothing of note that's happened there. So as things stood at halftime, or when we last updated with Atletico Madrid, is how they will be standing now. And it's Abdul de Car on the ball for Zena up to Bablovskili. Abdul de Car. Long names, getting Sean all confused. Uh, Pazella back to Abdul Kadir, that's the name. Golovin up to Mulatelli. Abdul de Kadir. Golovin. Zena with a good spell of possession, although Almas with a good tackle, and we'll go a counter attacking chance here. He keeps possession now. It's been played to Quintero. Misses the goal, it's, and he was onside too because it was played back. Really good chance to make it free, but it's still 2-0. And we now have a throw in the 78th minute. The way things stood before, still how they stand. No change of note there. We're on the ball though, Almas. Back to Dembele, back to Almas again. He looks to slot someone through, does he? Ball taken off him from Golovin. Tries to boot it out, but Alvalo Fernandez able to tie things up nicely for us. Ampadu up to Dembele, back to Ampadu. Can we get a third to really seal this for good with just over 10 minutes left? Gabriel Fernandez in the box. Ball taken off him. No penalty. Pazella. And now Zenit look to get us as they play out from the back. Although that should be covered from our defender. That's not. And it's Mulatelli in very comfortably here. He chips Gore on very cheeky. And Zenit are back in this. That miss by Quintero could prove a little bit costly actually. Albeit, if results stay the way they are in the other game, we'll be fine anyway, even with a draw. But look, it's a good goal by Zenit. Would have been tapped so we missed the header. Frustrating. And it's game on again at 2-1. Okay, before this highlight starts, we're going to take the red hearts off. Severlan on a yellow card. So it's a little bit risky, but both our wingers are knackered. We're going to bring Gali and hudson Adoy on, on the wings for both Dembele and Fernandez. And we'll see... What happens from this highlight? Hopefully there's not a second yellow to Severlano because uh, that would be interesting. And we do keep possession though, which is nice. Dembele, as we can hopefully get a third. Almas back to Dembele, back to Ampadu. We look to work something here. Mert Mulder, edge of the box, into Dembele. We look to put a ball across here, surely. No, no, he keeps possession. Thought there might be a penalty coming now. Almas with a long shot. High, it's wide. Still 2-1, but we've only got four minutes left. 
And they will show this goal kick though. So interesting times. We don't want to concede an equaliser. Sevillano back to taps over. We do have possession, which is a good start. Gali. Fresh legs should be able to use them, hopefully. Into a Gourmet. A Quintero in a good spot. Straight at Horvath, though. That's a couple of good chances for Quintero. Hasn't been able to make the most of them. And Man United have equalised. Okay. That's a notable change. With a red card, Manchester United equalised. Look, this game hopefully is about to finish. Because it's a Zenit throw in. They do have the ball, but there's only eight seconds left. Abdul Qadir making his way in field. Tries to put a ball over. Mulder cuts it out. And that is full time. We will qualify top. What we're really waiting on is to see if any other goals happen in that Man United game, I think. And also the Barcelona game, because that was still fairly evenly poised. But a good one for our boys. That late goal, not ideal. But first half goals to Quintillo. And then the own goal in the second half to Antov. I say goals. One of them was ruled out. Four offside, of course. He had a couple of good chances to get a hat trick there, Quintero. But still a good job from him, considering we have to rest Henrique as we look at the Zenit ratings. And now we see who else is going through to the next round of the Champions League, or should I say the knockouts. And it will be Manchester United. A late, late goal with 10 men as well to Martin Odegaard. And they sneak through ahead of Atletico Madrid, who will be in the Europa League. And Zenit, of course. Knocked out completely. Other Nova results. Bayern Munich winning over Real Madrid. So they're going to finish bottom of their group, Real Madrid, which is a real shocker for them. Maybe that job might come up again. And Barcelona lost to AZ. Liverpool won. Barcelona going to the Europa League. Otherwise, the other games, not a lot going on there. Porto beat Leipzig, so they'll qualify top of that group. But we will have a quick run through of those other groups. And we'll come back in at the start of tomorrow's episode, I think. There might be another Champions League draw party at the start of it, perhaps. But we get some nice money thanks to that result. And we'll just go to the Champions League and have a look at all of the groups, if we can. So we ran through the top four. So I think what we'll do is we'll do the bottom four, the teams that finished on our group, and then we'll go through the teams who we could be playing. There's some very interesting matchups here. Um, Southampton qualified top of Group E in the end, thanks to that win over Roma and Bayern will finish second. A possible opponent, Porto and Leipzig, out of Group F with Porto on top. So Leipzig is our possible opponent there. There's our group. We finish top. United finish second. And AZ, top of Group H, Liverpool second in that group. Hopefully we avoid Group H. That's all I'll say because that looks a bit scary, Liverpool. As do Bayern Munich. Lazio would be a very interesting matchup. I really don't want Paris Saint Germain just because they're French and that would be a bit boring with all due respect to it. So it's probably what we're going to get because Murphy's or the other team we could get Chelsea. I really want Celtic because everyone else, or maybe Leipzig, Celtic or Leipzig, with all due respect to them. Go remember, Celtic did win the Europa League last year. So they're actually a pretty good team. So I think we might be underestimating them a bit there as I say that you look at those teams though you're probably hoping for a dare I say it a Lazio a Celtic or a Leipzig you look at Liverpool's group form it's not great but AZ could be really good in the save so yeah we've got one of those teams in the second I really hope it's not PSG just because we've already played them lots in the series albeit when we do play them we one game aside don't tend to get hammered by them so Hmm, interesting. If you offered me Celtic, I'd probably take it. If you offered me Leipzig, I'd probably take it. Even Lazio, any of the others, I think we might be in for a bit of a battle. I was going to say in trouble, but in for a bit of a battle. But we'll bring you guys that draw at the start of tomorrow's episode. And we'll also, I think, we'll be coming back for the second Cote d'Azur of the season where we take on Nice, and it's the start of that January period as well. And then into February, we have PSG and a Champions League knockout round off the back of that. As I said, hopefully it's not PSG again, because that would be a little bit frustrating from a creator point of view if we keep on playing PSG. But yeah, good teams will be up against, even though we did qualify top of our group. Can give us some confidence, so three wins from our last three games in the Champions League. Bit narrow over Zenit, but we're starting to look a bit better than we were a month or so ago but if you did enjoy today's episode then please do go down below and leave a thumbs up on it and if you are new to the channel and still have not subscribed then also hit that button and turn that notification bell on to keep up with the content 
It is greatly appreciated. Let me know who you would prefer to see us go against in the Champions League first knockout round. I actually don't mind anyone, in theory, as long as it's not PSG, just because we're in France and that would be annoying. And until I see you for that draw and for that next game in tomorrow's episode, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I will see you then. Cheers. Bye.